Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And I'm back with another comparison video to one of the competitors in the American League for the Chicago White Sox in this upcoming season. And that will be the Seattle Mariners. And again, like the teams in the East and the other teams in the West, we don't play the Mariners very often this year. We only play them about four, seven, maybe six or seven times, but we do play the Mariners, so we need to know how they stack up against our White Sox. So, uh, I've done a lot of videos in the past on the White Sox comparison to other teams and uh, we uh, have the, um, and uh, you know, you can go back and look at those um, because this pretty much stays the same. It not any different from the other videos. You've got a lineup that includes Lewis Robert in center, Timmy Anderson at short, uh, Johan Moncada at third, Abreu at first, who we just locked up to another three years, Encarnacion at DH, who we went out and got this offseason, Grandall at catcher, Eloy Jimenez at, uh, in left field, um, Nick Mazzara in right, and then you've got a Mendic Madrigal connection at second, Madrigal maybe up a little later in the year. Maybe late April, maybe May, maybe June, we'll see. But Madrigal could hold that down until then. Could also be Lurie Garcia, who is listed here on the bench. But Lurie Garcia is a kind of a super utility guy, which is a big thing in today's baseball. And uh, he's probably better suited being someone that spells somebody every day. Uh, at a certain position, but we'll see. That's a decision for Ricky Renneria to make. You've got the uh, starting rotation of Giolito and Keuchel, who we went out and got this offseason. Ronaldo Lopez, who is looking to bounce back this year and do better than he did last year. Gio Gonzalez, the crafty lefty, who we went out and signed. And then Dylan Cease, probably holding that fifth spot coming out of camp, but We'll see how things go. Then you got Kopech potentially in the bullpen or maybe in the minors. I think they're going to take it slow with him, so we may not see him until later in the year. You've got Jimmy Cordero in the pen, Alex Colome, um, Bummer, Evan Marshall, Carson Fulmer potentially, but he's, you know, depends on how he does. Uh, Jace Fry, Kelvin Herrera, and Steve Ciszek. Herrera and um, Colome will probably contend for the closer role with Ciszek as a sure, sure setup man for them. Um, and also I want to mention over here in the rotation, there's possi a possibility of seeing Rodon, Carlos Rodon later in the year, although he did have Tommy John surgery, so it wouldn't be until later in the year even then, and it depends on how the White Sox want to take it with him and how they're going and how everyone in the rotation is doing, I would imagine. Um, but maybe we see Carlos Rodon, too. And then, of course, the bench, Lurie Garcia, James McCann, Zach Collins, and Adam Engel. Uh, so, that brings us to the Mariners. And the Mariners, you've got a bunch of guys that I have never heard of. Have any of you? Shed Long Jr. Now, apparently this guy played last year. I had no idea. He hit 263 with five homers and 152 at-bats for the Mariners. J.P. Crawford, I've heard of him, but he's not very good. Last year for the Mariners, he only hit 226 with seven homers and 345 at-bats and spent some time in Tacoma. Then you got Mitch Haniger in right field. He's pretty good, although last year he only hit 220 with 15 homers. 
Kyle Seeger at third base, again, pretty good. He hit 239, but he uh, had an injury-plagued season, and he managed to hit 23 homers in 393 at-bats, so he's got some power, uh, just like his brother. Then you got Tom Murphy at catcher, who is also got a lot of power. He hit 273 last year for the Mariners with 18 homers in 260 at-bats. Uh, he was backing up most of the year, backing up um, uh, Narvaez, who they lost to free agency. And then uh, you got Dan Vogelbach at DH. He hit 208, but he had 30 home runs. Kyle Lewis in left field, never heard of the guy, but he hit 268 with six homers in 71 at bats. And that's probably why I never heard of him. And then Evan White at first base and Malik Smith in center. Malik Smith, not a very good hitter, but he did steal 46 bases last year. Now, their rotation is a mess. It's terrible. You got Marco Gonzalez, who is pretty good. He was 16 and 13 with a 399 ERA. But then you got Kendall Graveman, who didn't even pitch last year. And from what I remember of him when he did pitch, he wasn't that great. Then you got Yusei Kikuchi, who last year was 6 and 11 with a 546 earned run average. Justice Sheffield, who was 0 and 1 with a 550 earned run average in 36 innings for Seattle last year. And Justin Dunn, who only pitched about six innings last year and had a 270 earned run average. So you've either got a lot of question marks or a lot of stiffs in this rotation, whichever way you want to look at it. The only good guy, the only reasonable guy up here is Marco Gonzalez um, that we know of. I mean, the guys that have don't have a lot of major league experience, well, you know, we'll see what happens with them. Then you got a bullpen of Matt McGill uh, being the closer. Now, Matt McGill last year was 5-2 and two with about a 4 ERA between Seattle and Minnesota. You got Carl Edwards Jr., who used to be on the Cubs. Fairly decent, but not great. Dan Altavia, who I don't even know who that is. Sam Truvialiala. I, I don't know. Taylor Gilbo. I mean, there's a bunch of guys with names I can't pronounce. I know that. Nestor Cortez and then Brandon Brennan. Those last two guys, it wasn't too bad with the pronunciation. And then on their bench, you're going to have D. Gordon, who, another guy who can fly. You got Austin Nola, Dylan Moore, and Braden Bishop. Um, so that's how Seattle stacks up, and it's not good for Seattle. Um, the dates that we will play them are pretty early in Chicago. It's going to be April 6th, 7th, and 8th for three games. And then Seattle um, on August 20th to the 23rd. So those are the dates we play them. It's like we play them right out of the gates and then we don't play them until the end of the year. Um, and probably by August they'll be, you know looking at everybody in their organization. So they'll be even worse, probably. If that's possible, they'll be even worse potentially in August than they will be in April. So, um, you know, I don't know about you guys, but this doesn't look like a team we got to worry about. I would even say, I would even hesitate to say they, they're probably in worse shape than the Orioles, although maybe not. But, I would put them in the same class as the Orioles, a team we really don't have to worry about. We may even sweep them. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's a bad team. Even even Marco Gonzalez, if we hit Marco Gonzalez in both series, okay, but he's only just fairly decent. I mean, you've got before you get to a Marco Gonzalez type for our rotation, you've got to get all the way down to, like, Gio Gonzalez. So, you know. So that's how we stack up against Seattle. Um, I really like our odds of doing very well against Seattle. Sometime I should probably sit down and try to figure out what our record might even be by looking at all these teams and how we should do against them. So, um, yeah, I mean, Seattle is, is a mess in progress. And uh, 
I mean, they were surprising last year. They got out of the gates. Nobody expected anything of them, and they got out of the gates really fast. Something like, I don't know what it was, like 12-3 and three or something like that. But this team will not go 12-3 and three in any 15-game stretch. So uh, what do you guys think? Do you think I'm right? We don't really have to worry about Seattle. It was probably even a waste of time to do a comparison video, maybe. So uh, interested to hear what you think, especially if you're a Seattle fan out there that happened to be seeing this. I mean, I understand they're rebuilding. Okay, we get that. They're, I mean, yes. But they've been rebuilding for like five years. And, um, you know, just like the Orioles. The Orioles, nobody expects anything of the Orioles. They're rebuilding. But they just started doing it. These guys, they've been doing it for a while. So uh, that's my spiel. Compare the White Sox to Seattle. And I'd be interested to hear what everybody thinks. Remember, subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Share it with other White Sox fans and other people that might be interested. Baseball fans even in general. But for right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke signing off.